So anyone who's followed my channel for any amount of time knows that I am great at titling videos, and this thing is a masterpiece. But what it's basically talking about is the concept of taking a small set of things and making a larger thing. Now this is all in service of making a, a modular wood set. That's where we're headed with this. But to give a little background, so you know when uh, video game levels are built, they're built from a, well, thousands of little meshes, you know, rocks, tables, chairs that you add up to create the macro, which is the level itself. Now, this technique is basically the artist builds a bunch of small pieces, small wood pieces. You know, he builds some railings, some, some runners, some, some deco pieces, some, pa some panels, that kind of stuff. Taking that high poly set, baking that down to a low poly set of pieces, and then taking those pieces and assembling them into props, wooden props, whether they be, I don't know, wall panels, doors, dressers, that kind of stuff. It's a good way to give, uh, to give a consistent look to a set of props, make it all look like it hangs together. And it means you don't have to have a big unique texture for every prop in the room. They all share this one set of materials, which is efficient. So that's what we're going to focus on here. Uh, uh, we're going to make a set of wood pieces. We're going to assemble a couple of examples and you get to see some photographs from my recent vacation. So you're in luck. Let's take a look. So we're going to launch right into my book, my vacation photos, like I promised we were going to. Uh, what this is, so this was an old mill that we were touring while we were over there. And uh, when I saw these, these pieces of wood, it really struck me how much this looks like game art. It, it, there's a lot of repeated elements. There's a lot of stuff that looks modular. I thought this would be a good place to talk about this micro to macro type situation. And what I really like about this is that it really addresses my, my pet, uh, my pet issue, I guess I have with some, some art you see, because this actually shows the, I didn't make a new layer here. This actually shows the construction line to see these separation areas that, well, <laughs> It shows that because that's what it actually is. This is how it was built. But when you build this in a computer, there's a temptation to just make everything look like it was sort of carved out of one piece of wood. And I really don't think that's, that's the best way to go to create a believable world. So uh, we're gonna focus on, on that. Uh, and also take a look at uh, this decorative panel. We're not gonna build this exact panel but we're gonna have our own panel. Now, in terms of scope for this little tutorial, um, I just wanna focus on a couple of pieces. So we're gonna build enough small mesh pieces to build something like this door and probably something like this wall panel back here and possibly some kind of, you know, a little cabinet piece or something. From there, you'll be able to extrapolate how this process works and make a, a larger and larger set to make more and more pieces. And it, it kind of steamrolls from there, trust me. So let's jump into Moto and take a look at the high poly. So for the high poly mesh, this is what I, I came up with for our small demonstration. This is, well, we'll just walk through these pieces here. So you can see we've got a, this is the piece that was kind of on the interior bits of, of the doors, these pieces here with the three prongs on each side. That's what this is meant to represent, is this panel. This is a more generic slat of wood that can be seen here. What else do we got here? Uh, this is our generic panel. Now I'm not adding a lot of detail here because I want to add the detail in Substance Painter. I think that'll just, just work a whole lot better. Jumping down to the bottom, here's the baseboard that goes up against the wall. Here's a generic four-sided column that just you know, can be used for a lot of things. Well, you, you can actually see it. You know, it's it's here. This bit here it is using it. It's over here. Uh, if you look at the door, you know, in reality, you could use it here, bend it across the top there. 
yeah, uh, there's our baseboard we're building. And let's see, this is just a, uh, a decorative banner piece, but this could be really that's meant to represent, uh, where am I at? Uh, this kind of thing up here. And finally, we have this piece up here, which is probably a little bit confusing since there's nothing like it on the reference image. But this is meant to be a just a large flat piece of wood. It's got some trim on the side, so it has a border. But this big block in the middle, this is really meant to, to just be a big flat area of wood that I can map to anything that doesn't necessarily need to be specialized, like the end of a... Well, the end of any piece of wood or the inside of a cabinet or whatever, it's just nice to have a generic chunk of of stuff that you can just throw polygons onto when you need to make it look like wood, but don't necessarily care that it looks perfect. Now, you've probably also noticed that each of these pieces has a, um, a divider line kind of modeled into it. I find it easier to do that kind of thing in geometry just because you simply have to bevel you know, one edge and then kind of push it in with the push tool. Uh, the other reason I do it, well the entire reason that I do that is, is so when you go to map these onto the wood, uh, let's see if I can see an example over here. Uh, I may not see one, but it's nice when you uh, or inside the game and you look at a piece of, of, of wood and you can see like a divider line you know, appears here or something. Just lends a little more credence to the whole you know, this was constructed and not not carved from a single block of wood. And uh, that's about it for the high poly I think. Actually the yeah that's, a, <laughs> that's it for the high poly. Uh, let's talk about the low poly. So with the low poly, I've tried to just simplify as much as I can. We could probably, probably could have gone a little further with this banister, but this is just for demonstration purposes. But you can see if I turn the high poly on, we're, we're pretty much laying right on top of it. And it's a very good representation of the high poly. This piece over here, we're really simplifying this, uh, this bit with the three pronged pieces in it because this will bake out uh, well enough to work inside the game as one polygon so we're going to leave that the way it be this again we're going to deco that up in substance banner and uh yeah that's about it for this so i'm going to bake out a normal map actually hold on let's look at the uvs for a second so the uvs on this mesh these are not the most careful uvs in the world but these are done using all the standard rules that I've talked about in my, my prior videos. Now I know that the wood material that I have in Substance Painter is, um, it runs horizontally from left to right. So I will make my life, you can't always do this because sometimes you, know, you need to pack the UVs more efficiently. But if I spin everything horizontally and set myself up for success. So if I could then go pack and I tell it not to reorient the meshes, just pack them together. Now they're all running horizontally and the wood texture will just map onto them much easier than it, you know, than it would before. And actually I'm going to, I think, tear off the sides of this See, I had mapped that as one island, but that's going to interfere with my ability to, to map the wood on. So let me tear that off, do that, pack that again. Okay. Now these ends are all running you know, correctly with the texture that I know is going to go on there, and they will just, you know, they'll flow around the piece much easier. So, yeah, that all depends on what, you know, how you plan to texture things. Anyway. Yeah, I think we're ready to, to to bake this out and head over to Substance Painter once I've got that normal map baked.
So before we jump over to substance, I, I figured it was worth taking a look at the you know, at the finished bake. You can see we've got you know these nice flat polygons, and we have those cut lines or, or panel lines or whatever you want to call them. You know, uh, are, are already baked in to the low poly mesh, and so those will come along for free. Yeah, and look at that nice detailing inside of substance, which you will see now. Uh, ignore the top section here and just look at the body of it of this pillar if I turn around here you can see that's a that's a fairly convincing representation of those that rip detail and we don't have to eat the polygons for it which you know is the whole point behind a normal map okay so now I've imported that low poly mesh and the normal map into substance painter all we have is the normal right now because uh, I don't want to bother baking the rest of the of the maps yet because I'm not done with the wood set yet. Now this is going to be a little uh, this is a pattern that I follow whenever I have stuff that has details that I want to add but I don't want to actually put them into the high poly mesh. It's just often easier to do them here in substance in substance painter so i'm going to go ahead and just uh let's see so we need to have yeah i make a fill layer with a black mask we'll call this the up details or whatever uh the fill layer only needs to be affecting the height map and we'll pull it up to maybe 0.5 okay so let me grab I want to do this, I want to paint, and I want to click on this alpha. I see if I click here, you know, it's painting in the height map. Now that's going into the normal, which is exactly what we want to have happen. And we're going to do this real simple. We're not going to do anything too fancy, but we're going to put a little, uh, oh, what should we do here? Let's see. Something like this on the bottom, and then we can spin that around, put it up at the top. Let's see what else we got that looks interesting. There's this piece. Maybe I can kind of position below the mouth. And so you see, we're starting to get some interesting looking stuff here. This is obviously. Actually, this looks kind of silly, but it's okay for demonstration purposes. <laughs> that is all we're after. Now, what else can I do here? How about this, this flower bit? What if that was on the skull's head? Maybe right there. Now it's starting to look more like an intentional thing. Okay. Now you can carry this as far as you want to carry it. I could go around and put some... Uh, Let's say, grab, yeah, let me default out the brush. If I go to basic hard, okay. So let me say, you know, I wanted to go through here and make some, uh, make some nail hole, nail heads or whatever. I could just make another layer, add a black mask, make this the down details. Pull this below the up. Do the same thing here, except now we're going to pull the height the height down to 0.5. Actually, which brings me back to the up layer for just a moment. Um, since it's a fill layer with an alpha mask, this is all available for tweaking. So I can make it weaker or stronger. Stronger is probably better in this case. So we'll pull it up to about here. Then in the down, let's say I wanted to like I said, I was going to make some, uh, I, I was going to make some nail heads. Well, you might want to start the nail head with a slight, turn off pressure on this with some indentate, with an indentation like that and like that. And then you could put, you know, put nail heads inside of those holes. Uh, we're not going to do that because that's that's a little much but that's just to show what you could do you could add scratches or 
or big scrapes or you know, anything else you want to add in here. So I've gone ahead and I updated the, the panel to look a little more like something, something reasonable. Um, yeah, it looks fine. Not loving it, but whatever. It's just for demonstration purposes. So uh, I also wanted to show how you can do, um, you know, slashes, damage, that kind of stuff. Just make a, you know, a similar layer that points down and just start to paint in some slash alphas. I mean, you can, you're pretty much, it's kind of like, I guess it's kind of like a non-destructive version of ZBrush. I mean, not, not fully, not, not to that awesome level, but yeah, you can get some pretty good results out of Substance Painter doing this sort of thing. So let's assume this is everything that I want to do to the wood. It's got all my details, all my little knickknacks, nail heads, everything. I've shown this technique before. What you want to do now is export the normal map to the hard drive, then re-import it again and assign it as the normal map, because that will put all of these details into the base normal map which will allow Substance to bake the curvature and AO and all that stuff from this detail. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. So with that done, I want you to see the difference. So I'm gonna get rid of these two layers. They're gone entirely. So we're back to the original normal map. Now this is the normal map that I re-imported after exporting it from Substance. If I drag that over here now, you can see we have all of our details back, yet we have no layers. So this is all part of the base detailing now, and we're good to move forward. So I'm going to run a bake on this now, and I've explained this before, but if you bake in Substance Painter with a low poly mesh and a normal map, you don't need a high poly necessarily because Substance Painter will fill in or, or rather will use that normal map instead of the high poly. So you don't get a perfect result, but you get a very, very good result. And it's more than good enough for most purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and bake out 2048s on all of these. And I'll see you when it's done. Okay, and we're back. So it's all been baked out now with ambient occlusion and all that sort of stuff. So now we're just going to throw the smart material on here, my uh, the wood that I've pre-chosen for this. I believe is the is this one. Yeah, there it is. So you can see once the wood's on, this takes on a whole different flavor of, you know, of its own. And all that detail that we stamped into the mesh shows through so it looks a lot more like carved wood now than it did before and this is the big blank piece of wood i was telling you about that i wanted to you know, i've got the option of using the edges but i also have a big flat area that i can map anything i want to you know when i'm building the smaller pieces you can see how the the scratches we laid in really show up well you can see how the uh, panel lines we cut in into the high poly uh, uh, turned out good and really show up well. Now, yes, there is, yeah, there's an argument to be made for doing these kinds of panel lines in Substance Painter, but you know, for just straight pieces like this, I find it much simpler to just do it here. Sorry, uh, to do it in the high poly. It's just, you know, like I said, it's an edge loop and a bevel. So really no problem at all. Yeah, so this should give us enough pieces or enough wood uh, wood primitive shapes that so we could begin to build some larger shapes. This is our micro, like I was saying. And I'm going to export this stuff. We'll export the tech, the diffuse texture at least, and get back into Modo. And we'll start to assemble some pieces. So finally, finally we're back inside of Modo and we can start talking about how to leverage this, this wood set. So what I've done is I've duplicated off that low poly. I gave it its own material and I imported the diffuse and normal map that I exported from Substance Painter. So I just have something to look at here in the viewport that you know vaguely resembles what it will look like inside the game. 
So for demonstration purposes, we're going to make a, another mesh. We're going to call it, you know, test wood 01 uh, to be super imaginative about it. Now Modus decided that what I want to see is my normal map as a diffuse color for some reason. So that's fine. We'll just roll with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that that piece and put it over here. Then I'm going to duplicate those polygons, just copy and paste them over. And I'll copy and paste them down again. This is, we're not going to build anything in particular here. I'm just going to kind of yeah, just have a noodle and just see what I come up with. And maybe I'll uh, just stop talking and noodle. Uh, you get the idea of what I'm doing here. Now I am going to start talking again because uh, I do want to make sure that it's clear what I'm doing here. So I had this one wood beam that I copied to, you know, to each side of this thing. So you can see that it's here, 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 and I flipped it. I'm flipping it on the two sides so it doesn't look exactly the same all the way across. I did the same for these wood panels. I kind of flipped them and rotated them. And these two wood pieces, I, I shimmied from side to side, so it wasn't obvious they were the same wood piece either. Now, this is all kind of jagged, and we're looking for like a wall panel. So, what I'm going to do is grab these verts, and I want to drag them over so they snap to the edge of this. But I don't want the uh, you know, texture to squish or distort you know, while I'm doing that. So the way to fix that is to turn on slip UVs. Slip UVs tells Moto that I want you to drag the vertices, but also uh, compensate with the UVs so that the 
you don't have the aforementioned skewing and such. I've got to make sure I can see something to snap to. Drive these around. Okay, that's straightened up those. We'll do the same for the for the baseboard down here. Okay. Now it's starting to look more like a wall panel with everything kind of jammed together. You, uh, you can see that we have our you know, we have our separation lines that were baked in here to the to the mesh. We have actual separation lines uh, that are just popping out of the wood because we had the you know, little bit of edge damage on the wood. So all across here, you can see there's a separation, and it's you know uh, down here it's kind of jutting into the baseboard. So you're getting that feeling of the construction you know, that I was talking about way back at the beginning. And I think what we're going to do is throw a couple of beams on each side to uh, round this out. And just to be sure we actually, yeah, we'll do the beam. Why not? All right. You get in here. Go over here. Now, yeah, one thing you do have to be careful of when you start using the slip UVs is you got to be sure you turn it off uh, before you try to move anything else. Let me drive this up. Let me drop this whole thing to the floor. And then we'll center it. Yeah, that's better. Er. Now, Here's a case where we have a piece that's not long enough. This board, as I baked it over here is, or this beam I should say, is not long enough to reach from top to bottom. Now I don't want to stretch it because stretching it is going to make it, you know, look stretched. All right, you can see this is all stretching now and my texel density is, is going to be off. So let me turn on the wireframes in a bright way so you can see them. One trick for this is just to copy this, copy this mesh, do a flip horizontally, and then drag that down so it meets up with this piece of wood again. Have those two pieces merge polygons, and now I am going to slip UVs and drag this down to the top. But you can see when this is all said and done, you can't really tell that much that this was mirrored over here like that. And that's that's one way to get a lot of good reuse out of pieces is to just keep mirroring them, keep stacking them edge to edge to edge. And uh, make lots of good you know, lots of good reuse out of it. Uh, this we're going to drag over. Oh, see, see, I left slip UVs on it. When I drag this piece, it's going to slide and get all messy. So you really have to be cognizant of that slip UV setting. It, it It's kind of a moto specific thing, I guess, but it it's just a matter of getting used to the UI. And on this side, we're going to flip it first. Then we're going to then we're going to mirror it and do that same operation where we drag it down, merge it, stitch it, do all that good stuff. Because then, you know, since I uh, mirrored and flipped it before I did any of that, it looks different on this side than it does on this side, although it's the exact same piece of wood. So this is a pretty good looking wall panel, you know, for a test anyway. Now you will notice up here that the tops of these aren't aren't filled in. They aren't attached to anything, which is completely true. And this is where that big sheet of wood comes in, or that big empty area. If I go back to pieces and I grab this, I can see that that wood is mapped to this spot on the UV map, that big plane of empty wood. If I go back to my test wood, I can tell Moto, hey, why don't you just show me 
that diffuse texture in the background. So now I know exactly where it's at. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these in with cat polygons. And I'm going to grab those and just do a generic, uh, a planar map on them. Now we have a problem, obviously these are huge and these are small. So to match up the texel density, we'll just use the built-in texel density tools. So I'll pull the texel density out. I'll select any polygon, tell it to sample, select the new polygons that we just created and tell it to, to apply individually to those two. Now they're, the, now they're the correct size. And if you look at them in the world, they look like they belong there because they are the correct you know, correct text density. And you can apply that to all, to all sorts of things. Um, yeah, you can apply that to anything that you want to map generically. So here's, so anyway, there's our wood panel. It's, uh, and just because this is game art, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to Snap to the grid, drag this over so it up, oh, turn off my slip UVs, drag this over so that this point sits on the world origin. And we're going to grab the whole thing and we're going to apply an absolute scaling to it. Now it's a weird size. So I'm going to round that up to a power of 10, let's say 240 wide and maybe 160 high and explicitly scale that up. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the origin there. Actually, no, put the origin here. Then move it back to the world origin. Okay. Now, if you're paying attention, you probably have noticed that I, there is a gap being formed here because the baseboard is sticking out too far. And that's actually completely fine and, and expected to be honest. So what I'm going to do is do the exact same thing as I did up to, there's, there's nicer ways to cover this up, but you know, because we're doing a demo here, I'm going to say, well, this is a good demonstration of that same technique again. So I'm going to grab all of the polygons around there and cap off that end. Uh, da, 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 cap. Okay. Then grab these bits. Or let me cut this in too. Oh, cut that in. Okay. Over here. All right. Then I'm going to do the same thing where I do the uh, generic planar mapping. I'm going to pull up Texel density, which still has the same value from last time. So I'll just tell it to apply. Drag those down so they sit inside that wood, that wood area. And for stuff like this, where the player's not really going to get a good look at it, you can get away with just slapping some generic wood on it. And you know, that'll look okay inside the game. And up here, one last thing we'll demonstrate. This bit up here really should go all the way back to the wall because you know, if the player's upstairs and looking down at this wall chunk, they're going to see this big missing piece. But I don't want to just grab this and pull it because that's going to stretch that texture very badly. So a good solution to that is to look for a strip of wood that has the basic properties on it that I want. Something like this piece here is fine. Copy and paste that. I'm going to rotate it around so it's facing the right way. I'm going to isolate these two things. So grab this and with snapping enabled, drag it up so it sits at the end of that piece of wood. 
grab these verts, turn on my slip UVs, drag this back over to here. Now, let me turn everything else back on. And we're going to have a little bit of a stretch here, but nothing major. Just uh, kill slip UVs just to pull it back to there and tuck it in. Sometimes you have little, little tucks and tweaks like that. But you can see now that I've stitched that together, that looks completely reasonable and, and looks like it, you know, it belongs like that. So we have a wall panel. We're not going to bother with the bottom for now, but we have a wall panel that can tile along a wall and shares, shares one texture that you can reuse over and over again. And it was pretty painless to put together. And you can see how you can take that and make multiple wall panels, make, uh, make doors, make frames, make window frames, all that kind of stuff, all from the same set of low poly pieces. You would, well, and I have when I've used this technique on actual games, have a ton of these pieces all mapped to the same texture. But this is a good demonstration. So for the final bit of the video, I'm going to import this uh, into Unreal Engine 4 uh, just to show off how it looks and how it tiles and all that kind of stuff. So hang on, let me do that. So kind of amusingly, I was looking for an Unreal Engine project that would uh, allow me to import, you know, these meshes and textures to show you what it looks like. But then I remembered that I had one that I was working on prior. So this is the exact technique that we uh, we've been talking about. It's one, well, it's you know, one or two textures, but it's the same. You know, it's the same idea. You know, making a piece making small pieces and putting together larger pieces and tiling and sticking them together to form an environment set. Uh, this is very efficient. It's low vertex count. It's using one or two materials. It's, yeah, this is the way you want to go on certain platforms. Now, I didn't want to completely skip over the piece we made, so I did import it and all of its textures. So I'm going to drag it in here. Uh, our texture is quite a bit darker than this one, so we'll just turn off the lights for now. But if I copy this out a few times and then turn the lights back on, and then I'll throw a, just a, a new light in here so we can, there we go, so we can light this up. And I'll just move that light back and forth, and you can see there's our, uh, there's our, wood, pa there's our wood panel that we made. It, it, it's got lots of detail. It's you know, it can form the basis of a big environment set, and that's micro to macro modularity uh, in a nutshell. Well, in kind of a long nutshell, but still the nutshell. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to uh, just reiterate here at the end. Uh, this wasn't meant to be a complete tutorial. You know, I, I, I skipped over you know, a lot of the minutia, but I felt that I wanted to give you the broad strokes and the idea you know, rather than the step-by-step -step process. So hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully you can get something out of it. And if you make a modular set with this, you know, please let me know. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.